Jacques Maritain French May the 18th of November 1882 to the 28th of April 1973 was a French Catholic philosopher raised Protestant he was agnostic before converting to Catholicism in 1906 an author of more than 60 books he helped to revive Thomas Aquinas for modern times and was influential in the development and drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Pope Paul VI presented his message to men of thought and of science at the close of Vatican II to Maritain, his longtime friend and mentor. The same pope had seriously considered making him a lay cardinal, but Maritain rejected it. Maritain's interest and works spanned many aspects of philosophy, including aesthetics, political theory, philosophy of science, metaphysics, the nature of education, liturgy and ecclesiology. Life Maritain was born in Paris, the son of Paul Maritain, who was a lawyer, and his wife Genevieve Favre, the daughter of Jules Favre, and was reared in a liberal Protestant milieu. He was sent to the Lycée Henri IV. Later, he attended the Sorbonne, studying the natural sciences, chemistry, biology and physics. At the Sorbonne, he met Raisa Omankov, a Russian-Jewish émigré. They married in 1904. A noted poet and mystic, she participated as his intellectual partner in his search for truth. Rice's sister, Vera Omankov, lived with Jacques and Rice for almost all their married life. At the Sorbonne, Jacques and Rice soon became disenchanted with scientism, which could not, in their view, address the larger existential issues of life. In 1901, in light of this disillusionment, they made a pact to commit suicide together if they could not discover some deeper meaning to life within a year. They were spared from following through on this because, at the urging of Charles Pagai, they attended the lectures of Henri Bergson at the Collège de France. Bergson's critique of scientism dissolved their intellectual despair and instilled in them the sense of the absolute. Then, through the influence of Léon Bloy, they converted to the Roman Catholic faith in 1906. In the fall of 1907, the Maritains moved to Heidelberg, where Jacques studied biology under Hans Driesch. Hans Driesch's theory of neo-vitalism attracted Jacques because of its affinity with Henri Bergson. During this time, Risa fell ill, and during her convalescence, their spiritual advisor, a Dominican friar named Fr. Humbert Clarissic, introduced her to the writings of Thomas Aquinas. She read them with enthusiasm and, in turn, exhorted her husband to examine the saint's writings. In Thomas, Maritain found a number of insights and ideas that he had believed all along. He wrote, Thenceforth, in affirming to myself, without chicanery or diminution, the authentic value of the reality of our human instruments of knowledge, I was already a Thomist without knowing it. When several months later I came to the Summa Theologia, I would construct no impediment to its luminous flood. From the angelic doctor, the honorary title of Aquinas, he was led to the philosopher, as Aquinas called Aristotle. Still later, to further his intellectual development, he read the Neo-Thomists. Beginning in 1912, Maritain taught at the Collège Stanislas. He later moved to the Institut Catholique de Paris. For the 1916-1917 academic year, he taught at the Petit Seminaire de Versailles. In 1930 Maritain and Étienne Gilson received honorary doctorates in philosophy from the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, Angelicum. In 1933, he gave his first lectures in North America in Toronto at the Pontifical Institute of Medieval Studies. He also taught at Columbia University, at the Committee on Social Thought, University of Chicago, at the University of Notre Dame, and at Princeton University. From 1945 to 1948, he was the French ambassador to the Holy See. Afterwards, he returned to Princeton University where he achieved the Elysian status as he put it, of a professor emeritus in 1956. Risa Maritain died in 1960. After her death, Jacques published her journal under the title, Rice's Journal. For several years Maritain was an honorary chairman of the Congress for Cultural Freedom, appearing as a keynote speaker at its 1960 conference in Berlin. From 1961, Maritain lived with the Little Brothers of Jesus in Toulouse, France. He had an influence on the order since its foundation in 1933. He became a little brother in 1970. 
Jacques and Risa Maritain are buried in the cemetery of Kolbsheim, a little French village in Alsace where he had spent many summers at the estate of his friends, Antoinette and Alexander Grunelius. A cause for beatification of him and his wife Risa is being planned. <laughs> Work The foundation of Maritain's thought is Aristotle, Aquinas, and the Thomistic commentators, especially John of St. Thomas. He is eclectic in his use of these sources. Maritain's philosophy is based on evidence accrued by the senses and acquired by an understanding of first principles. Maritain defended philosophy as a science against those who would degrade it and promoted philosophy as the queen of sciences. In 1910, Jacques Maritain completed his first contribution to modern philosophy, a 28-page article titled, Reason and Modern Science, published in Revue de Philosophie June issue. In it, he warned that science was becoming a divinity, its methodology usurping the role of reason and philosophy. Science was supplanting the humanities in importance. In 1917, a committee of French bishops commissioned Jacques to write a series of textbooks to be used in Catholic colleges and seminaries. He wrote and completed only one of these projects, titled Elements de Philosophie Introduction of Philosophy in 1920. It has been a standard text ever since in many Catholic seminaries. He wrote in his introduction, If the philosophy of Aristotle, as revived and enriched by Thomas Aquinas and his school, may rightly be called the Christian philosophy, both because the Church is never weary of putting it forward as the only true philosophy and because it harmonizes perfectly with the truths of faith, nevertheless it is proposed here for the reader's acceptance not because it is Christian, but because it is demonstrably true. This agreement between a philosophic system founded by a pagan and the dogmas of revelation is no doubt an external sign, an extra-philosophic guarantee of its truth, but from its own rational evidence, that it derives its authority as a philosophy. During the Second World War, Jacques Maritain protested the policies of the Vichy government while teaching at the Pontifical Institute for Medieval Studies in Canada. Moving to New York, Maritain became deeply involved in rescue activities, seeking to bring persecuted and threatened academics, many of them Jews, to America. He was instrumental in founding the École Libre des Hautes Études, a kind of university in exile that was, at the same time, the center of Gaullist resistance in the United States. After the war, in a papal audience on 16 July 1946, he tried unsuccessfully to have Pope Pius XII officially denounce antisemitism. Many of his American papers are held by the University of Notre Dame, which established the Jacques Maritain Center in 1957. The Cercle d'études Jacques and Risa Maritain is an association founded by the philosopher himself in 1962 in Kolbsheim, near Strasbourg, France, where the couple is also buried. The purpose of these centers is to encourage study and research of Maritain's thought and expand upon them. It is also absorbed in translating and editing his writings. Topic metaphysics and epistemology Maritain's philosophy is based on the view that metaphysics is prior to epistemology. Being is first apprehended implicitly in sense experience, and is known in two ways. First, being is known reflexively by abstraction from sense experience. One experiences a particular being, e.g. a cup, a dog, etc. and through reflection bending back on the judgment, e.g. this is a dog, one recognizes that the object in question is an existent. Second, in light of attaining being reflexively through apprehension of sense experience one may arrive at what Maritain calls an intuition of being. For Maritain this is the point of departure for metaphysics, without the intuition of being one cannot be a metaphysician at all. The intuition of being involves rising to the apprehension of ens secundum quad est ens being insofar as it is a being. In existence and the existent he explains, it is being, attained or perceived at the summit of an abstractive intellection, of an eidetic or intensive visualization which owes its purity and power of illumination only to the fact that the intellect, one day, was stirred to its depths and trans-illuminated by the impact of the act of existing apprehended in things, and because it was quickened to the point of receiving this act, or hearkening to it, within itself, in the intelligible and super-intelligible integrity of the tone particular to it, p. 20. In view of this priority given to metaphysics, Maritain advocates an epistemology he calls critical realism. Maritain's epistemology is not critical in Kant's sense, which held that one could only know anything after undertaking a thorough critique of one's cognitive abilities. 
Rather, it is critical in the sense that it is not a naive or non-philosophical realism, but one that is defended by way of reason. Against Kant's critical project Maritain argues that epistemology is reflexive, you can only defend a theory of knowledge in light of knowledge you have already attained. Consequently, the critical question is not the question of modern philosophy, how do we pass from what is perceived to what is? Rather, since the mind, from the very start, reveals itself as warranted in its certitude by things and measured by an esse independent of itself, how are we to judge if, how, on what conditions, and to what extent it is so both in principle and in the various moments of knowledge? In contrast idealism inevitably ends up in contradiction, since it does not recognize the universal scope of the first principles of identity, contradiction, and finality. These become merely laws of thought or language, but not of being, which opens the way to contradictions being instantiated in reality. Maritain's metaphysics ascends from this account of being to a critique of the philosophical aspects of modern science, through analogy to an account of the existence and nature of God as it is known philosophically and through mystical experience. Topic ethics Maritain was a strong defender of a natural law ethics. He viewed ethical norms as being rooted in human nature. For Maritain the natural law is known primarily, not through philosophical argument and demonstration, but rather through connaturality. Connatural knowledge is a kind of knowledge by acquaintance. We know the natural law through our direct acquaintance with it in our human experience. Of central importance, is Maritain's argument that natural rights are rooted in the natural law. This was key to his involvement in the drafting of the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Another important aspect of his ethics was his insistence upon the need for moral philosophy to be conducted in a theological context. While a Christian could engage in speculative thought about nature or metaphysics in a purely rational manner and develop an adequate philosophy of nature of metaphysics, this is not possible with ethics. Moral philosophy must address the actual state of the human person, and this is a person in a state of grace. Thus, moral philosophy adequately considered must take into account properly theological truths. It would be impossible, for instance, to develop an adequate moral philosophy without giving consideration to properly theological facts such as original sin and the supernatural end of the human person in beatitude. Any moral philosophy that does not take into account these realities that are only known through faith would be fundamentally incomplete. Topic. Political theory Maritain advocated what he called integral humanism. He argued that secular forms of humanism were inevitably anti-human in that they refused to recognize the whole person. Once the spiritual dimension of human nature is rejected, we no longer have an integral, but merely partial humanism, one which rejects a fundamental aspect of the human person. Accordingly, in integral humanism he explores the prospects for a new Christendom, rooted in his philosophical pluralism, in order to find ways Christianity could inform political discourse and policy in a pluralistic age. In this account he develops a theory of cooperation, to show how people of different intellectual positions can nevertheless cooperate to achieve common practical aims. Maritain's political theory was extremely influential, and was a primary source behind the Christian democratic movement. Maritain also corresponded with, and was a friend of the American radical community organizer Saul Alinsky and French Prime Minister Robert Schumann. Topic. Criticism Major criticisms of Maritain have included an overdependence upon late scholastic commentators at the expense of fidelity to Aquinas' own text. However, Maritain is frequently developing his own thought to address contemporary problems. His work is that of a philosopher who makes use of historical sources to develop his own positions rather than that of a historian of philosophy. Fr. Santiago Ramirez argued strongly that Maritain's moral philosophy adequately considered could not be distinguished in any meaningful way from moral theology as such. Tracy Rowland has argued that the lack of a fully developed philosophy of culture in Maritain and others notably Rahner, was responsible for an inadequate notion of culture in the documents of Vatican II and thereby for much of the misapplication of the conciliar texts in the life of the Church following the Council. Maritain's political theory has been criticized for a democratic pluralism that appeals to something very similar to the later liberal philosopher John Rawls' conception of an overlapping consensus of reasonable views. 
It is argued that such a view illegitimately presupposes the necessity of pluralistic conceptions of the human good. Sayings Vae mihi si non thomistizavero. Woe to me if I do not thomisticize. Je n'adore que Dieu. I adore only God. The artist pours out his creative spirit into a work, the philosopher measures his knowing spirit by the real. I do not know if Saul Alinsky knows God. But I assure you that God knows Saul Alinsky. We do not need a truth to serve us, we need a truth that we can serve. Topic writings Topic Significant works in English Introduction to Philosophy, Christian Classics, Inc., Westminster, M.D., 1st, 1930, 1991. The Degrees of Knowledge, Aridge. 1932 Integral Humanism, Aridge. 1936 An Introduction to Logic 1937 A Preface to Metaphysics 1939 1939 Education at the Crossroads ENGL 1942 The Person and the Common Good FR 1947 Art and Scholasticism with Other Essays Sheed and Ward London 1947 Existence and the Existent FR 1947 Trans by Louis Galantier and Gerald B Phelan Image Books Division of Doubleday and Co Inc Garden City, New York, 1948, Image Book, 1956. ISBN 978-0-8371-8078-6 Philosophy of Nature 1951, The Range of Reason, ENGL. 1952 Approaches to God, ENGL. 1954 Creative Intuition in Art and Poetry, ENGL. 1953 Man and the State, A Ridge, University of Chicago Press, Chicago, Ill, 1951. A Preface to Metaphysics, ENGL. 1962 God and the Permission of Evil, Trans. Joseph W. Evans, The Bruce Publishing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1966 A Ridge, 1963. Moral Philosophy, 1964 The Peasant of the Garan, An Old Layman Questions Himself About the Present Time, Trans. Michael Cudahy and Elizabeth Hughes, Holt, Reinhardt and Winston, N.Y., 1968, A Ridge. 1966. The Education of Man, The Educational Philosophy of Jacques Maritain, ed. D. I. Gallagher, Notre Dame, Ind. 1967 Topic Other works in English Religion and Culture 1931, The Things That Are Not Caesars 1931, The Onas, Conversations of a Sage 1933, Freedom in the Modern World 1935, True Humanism 1938, Integral Humanism 1968, A Christian Looks at the Jewish Question 1939, The Twilight of Civilization 1939, Scholasticism and Politics, New York 1940 Science and Wisdom 1940, Religion and the Modern World 1941 France My Country Through the Disaster 1941 The Living Thoughts of St Paul 1941 France My Country Through the Disaster 1941 Ransoming the Time 1941 Christian Humanism 1942 St Thomas and the Problem of Evil Milwaukee 1942 Essays in Thomism New York 1942 The Rights of Man and Natural Law 1943 Prayer and Intelligence 1943 Give John a Sword 1944 the Dream of Descartes 1944 Christianity and Democracy 1944 Messages 1941 to 1944 New York 1945 A Faith to Live By 1947 The Person and the Common Good 1947 Art and Faith with Jean Cocteau 1951 The Pluralist Principle in Democracy 1952 Creative Intuition in Art and History 1953 An Essay on Christian Philosophy 1955 The Situation of Poetry with Rice Maritain 1955 Bergsonian Philosophy 1955 Reflections on America 1958 Street Thomas Aquinas 1958 The Degrees of Knowledge 1959 the Sin of the Angel, an essay on a reinterpretation of some Thomistic positions 1959. Liturgy and Contemplation 1960. The Responsibility of the Artist 1960. On the Use of Philosophy 1961. God and the Permission of Evil 1966. Challenges and Renewals, ed. J. W. Evans, L. R. Ward, Notre Dame, Ind. 1966. On the Grace and Humanity of Jesus 1969 
On the Church of Christ, the Person of the Church and Her Personnel 1973. Notebooks 1984. Natural Law, Reflections on Theory and Practice ed., with Introductions and Notes, by William Sweet, St. Augustine's Press distributed by University of Chicago Press, 2001, Second Printing, Corrected, 2003. Topic. Original works in French La philosophie bergsonienne, 1914 1948. Elements de philosophie, two volumes, Paris 1920-23 Art et scholastique, 1920 Théonas aux les intrichens d'une sage et de deux philosophies sur diverses matières inégalement actuelles, Paris, Nouvelle Library Nationale, 1921 Antimodern, Paris, Edition de la Revue des Junes, 1922 Reflections sur l'intelligence et sur sa vie propre, Paris, Nouvelle Library Nationale, 1924. Trois Reformateurs, Luther, Descartes, Rousseau, avec six portraits, Paris, Plan, 1925 Réponse à Jean Cocteau, 1926 Une opinion sur Charles Maurras et le devoir des Catholiques, Paris, Plan, 1926 Primate du Spirituel, 1927 Pourquoi Roma Parle Call, Paris, Spes, 1927 Quelques pages sur Léon Bloy, Paris 1927 Clairvoyance de Rome Call, Paris, Spes, 1929 La Docteur Angelique, Paris, Paul Hartmann, 1929 Religion et Culture, Paris, Desclay de Brouwer, 1930 1946. La Thomisme et la Civilisation, 1932 Distinguer pour unir aux les degrés du Savoie, Paris 1932 Le Sange de Descartes, Suivi de quelques essais, Paris 1932 De la philosophie chrétienne, Paris, Desclay de Brouwer, 1933 Du régime temporel et de la liberté, Paris, DDB, 1933 Sept Lacan's sur lettre et les premiers principes de la raison spéculative, Paris 1934 Frontiers de la poésie et autres essais, Paris 1935 La philosophie de la nature, essai critique sur ses frontiers et son objet, Paris 1935-1948 Lettre sur l'indépendance, Paris, Desclay de Brouwer, 1935 Science et Sagesse, Paris 1935 Humanize me integral. Problemes temporels et spirituels d'une nouvelle crescente, Zunoxte Spanish 1935, Paris, Fernand Abier, 1936, 1947. Les Juifs parmi les nations, Paris, Surf, 1938. Situation de la Posey, 1938. Questions de conscience, essays et allocutions, Paris, Desclay de Brouwer, 1938. La personne humaine et la société, Paris 1939. Le crépuscule de la civilisation, Paris, Aide. Les nouvelles lettres, 1939. Quatre essais sur l'esprit dans sa tradition charnel, Paris 1939. 1956. De la justice politique, notes sur la pressante guerre, Paris 1948. Travers le désastre, New York 1941. 1946. Confession de Foy, New York 1941. La pensée de Saint Paul, New York 1941. Paris 1947. Les droits de l'homme et le loi naturel, New York 1942. Paris 1947, Christianism et Démocratie, New York 1943, Paris 1945, Principes d'une politique humaniste, New York 1944, Paris 1945, De Bergson à Thomas Dawkin, Essays de métaphysique et de morale, New York 1944, Paris 1947, A Travers la Victoire, Paris 1945, Pour la Justice, Articles et Discours 1940-1945, New York 1945, La Sorte de l'homme, Nucatel 1945, Court Traité de l'Existence et de l'Existent, Paris 1947, La Personne et le Bien Commune, Paris 1947, Raison et Raisons, Essays détachés, Paris 1948, La Signification de l'Athéisme Contemporain, Paris 1949, Neuf Lacan sur les Notions, Premiers de la Philosophie Morale, Paris 1951, Approaches de Dieu, Paris 1953.
Lum et l'état engl man and state 1951 paris puf 1953 pour une philosophie de l'éducation paris 1959 la philosophie dans la cité paris 1960 la philosophie morale volume I. Examen historique et critique des grands systèmes, Paris 1960 Dieu et la permission du mal, 1963 Carnet de notes, Paris, DDB, 1965 L'intuition créatrice dans l'art et dans la poésie, Paris, Desclay de Brouwer, 1966 Engl, 1953 Le Paysan de la Garonne. Un vieux laïc s'interroge à propos du temps présent, Paris, DDB, 1966 de la grâce et de la humanité de Jésus, 1967 de l'Église du Christ. La personne de l'Église et son personnel, Paris 1970 approaches sans entraves, posthum 1973. La loi naturelle ou loi non écrite, texte initit, établi par Georges Bratzola. Freiburg, Suisse, Editions Universitaires, 1986. Lectures on Natural Law. T.R. William Sweet. In the Collected Works of Jacques Maritain, Vol. V. Notre Dame, in, University of Notre Dame Press, forthcoming, Herves Completes de Jacques et Rice Maritain, 16 BDE, 1982-1999. Topic see also Personalism topic Notes topic References G. B. Phelan, Jacques Maritain, N.Y., 1937. J. W. Evans in Catholic Encyclopedia Vol. 16 Supplement 1967-1974. Michael R. Maris, The Ambassador and the Pope, Pius XII, Jacques Maritain and the Jews, Commonwealth, October 22, 2004 H. Bars, Maritain en Notre Temps, Paris, 1959. D. and I. Gallagher, The Achievement of Jacques and Rice Maritain, A Bibliography, 1906-1961, N.Y., 1962. J. W. Evans, ed., Jacques Maritain, The Man and His Achievement, N.Y., 1963. C. A. Fecker, The Philosophy of Jacques Maritain, Westminster, M.D., 1963. Jude P. Doherty, Jacques Maritain, An Intellectual Profile, Catholic University of America Press, 2003 Ralph McInerney, The Very Rich Hours of Jacques Maritain, A Spiritual Life, University of Notre Dame Press, 2003 Hannah, Martha 1996. The Mobilization of Intellect, French Scholars and Writers During the Great War. Harvard University Press. ISBN 0674577558. Topic further reading The Social and Political Philosophy of Jacques Maritain 1955 W. Herberg ed. Four Existentialist Theologians 1958 The Philosophy of Jacques Maritain 1953 Jacques Maritain, Antimodern or Ultramodern? An Historical Analysis of His Critics, His Thought, and His Life 1974 Topic External links Quotations related to Jacques Maritain at Wikiquote Etudes Maritainiens Maritain Studies Maritain Center, Kolbsheim in French Cirque de Tudes J. and R. Maritain at Kolbsheim, France. Jacques Maritain Center at the University of Notre Dame. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Jacques Maritain by William Sweet. International Jacques Maritain Institute. One of the primary and secondary literatures on Jacques Maritain. Works by or about Jacques Maritain in libraries WorldCat Catalog. Jacques Maritain, Man and the State 1951.